Hey gang, hi, 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 uh, Super Tech here with a Super Johnson Fragilistic Tech Tip for you on the VFO. After you see this, you'll say, well, hot dog, why didn't I come up with that? All right, you heard Super Tech. I've got two tech tips for you in this video. One applies to the built-in VFOs that are in Johnson Navigators, Rangers, Valiants, etc. The second tech tip only applies to the Navigator and that's frequency jump. I think you guys will like this. Let's go. So here's the situation, guys. You get yourself a nice Johnson Ranger, Navigator, Valiant, etc. And you find that the built-in VFO has a broken coupler, which looks something like this, okay? So on this side, there's a 3 16 inch shaft, and then this side is a quarter inch shaft, which couples to the vernier on the front of your Ranger. These get broken because sometimes guys flex the front panel or they just disassemble the VFO incorrectly and you break this phenolic insulator and you're hosed. Now there is a guy that makes a kit okay, where you can buy just that piece and replace it but you have to drill out these pop rivets and use screws and it's quite the shake up. Well I have came up with a simple solution. So a possible solution to this problem is find a standard coupler like you see here. This is quarter inch to quarter inch with the insulator. A lot of old radios had these installed. You can find them at surplus outlets such as Fair Radio Sales or Surplus Sales of Nebraska. Okay, So you get one of these quarter to quarter inch couplers which will go right into the place of the old one but you still have the problem of the quarter inch hole. So what I did is I found a little spacer. So this spacer has an outside diameter of a quarter inch. The inside diameter used to be approximately one eighth inch. We put this on a lathe, drilled the center out to three sixteenths. So now it'll go inside of that quarter inch hole and reduce it to three sixteenths. Then you simply slide it back on the shaft, take your set screws, put pressure on it. It doesn't take a lot of torque to turn that cap, and you're back in business. So quick note, if your spacer is made out of aluminum, the dual set screws will crush it enough to grip that VFO shaft. It does not take a lot of torque to turn it. But if you have a metal spacer, you'll need to put a little hole in the side, like I did here, so one of the set screws will actually pass through that hole and hit the inner shaft. All right, let's get it installed. So there's a new coupler slid in to the case of the VFO. I'm gonna move it up onto the cap and it will slide right back over that 3 16 inch shaft. Let me get these set screws tightened and I'll show you the operation of the VFO. There's a coupler in place. Tuning cap turns nice and free. You'll never have another issue with it again. And if you break this coupler, now you can easily replace it. So I hope you found some value in that first tech tip on reducing that shaft size so you can use the standard coupler. I've struggled with that over the years and it just hit me and I thought, man, what a great thing to share with you guys. Now I do have another tech tip for the Ranger VFO, okay? This VFO actually came out of a Navigator, all right? So originally there was not an OA2 installed and there was other circuitry differences. So I'm getting ready to make this a standalone VFO. That's why you see these controls facing frontwise where you normally the switch pokes out the bottom, okay? So I'm doing a little rearrangement. After I got this VFO going, I noticed during the calibration that there was a problem on band one, which is for 160 meters and 80 meters, okay? So in that position, the VFO is supposed to put out somewhere around 1.7 to 2 megahertz as you tune it. Well, I found that it would start at 1.7 megahertz, and when I got through about half the travel, it would jump to 3.5 megahertz. 
I thought, well, that's really weird. And I've seen this problem in the past, an abrupt frequency jump on that band. So I thought, what could be causing this, right? So I thought, well, the Ranger doesn't do that. So I took some time and I studied the Ranger's schematic and I compared it to the Navigator and I found that there are some differences, okay? And they're both on the 160 meter band. So here's what it is. If you compare the two schematics, you'll see that there's two coils in the Navigator that are not present on the Ranger's VFO schematic. Those coils are L21 and L12. So on the Ranger, they removed those coils and there is actually a added jumper on this little multi-position switch. They jumped pins eight and 10. Then they added another 1.5K resistor across pins nine and 10. After I made these changes and put it on the scope, I had a really nice sine wave. There's no little funny bump and the frequency is right on the money and stable. Unfortunately, to do this update, you gotta tear the VFO out of your navigator and get to that switch. It's a very difficult process, but if you're experiencing the frequency jump, I'd highly suggest you do that update and add the OA2 while you're in there because there's an open slot for it, okay? If you want some of this information, just email me and I will send you a copy of this new schematic. Hope you enjoyed the tech tips.